Okay, so what we're going to look at today are logarithmic functions. We spent the last section, I gave you three videos, I think, ones that dealt with simply exponents and exponent laws, right? And then one that dealt with what uh, exponential functions were, and then solving exponential equations, making the same base. Uh, and then the third video dealt with different types of formulas or different type of situations that dealt with... Uh, exponential functions. So that's your A naught, so initial amount, your multiplication factor, and the number of times it's multiplied. And then we had compound interest that was uh, this formula here. That is a specific formula for compound interest. You're doing essentially the same thing here, where this is your B and this is your uh, exponent there. It's just for compound interest, we've broken down into the various components that comprise compound interest, the, multi uh, the rate, at which you your interest is growing, the, the time that has elapsed, the compounding uh, periods per year. So there's a very uh, there's a, quite a few different constants uh, variables involved there. We looked. Uh, this is your basic exponential function. When we dealt with some harder questions with these situations, finding the time up here was often uh, a little difficult to do. The questions that we had worked well, so they 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 worked out properly, but the problem arises often is how do you find that time? How do you find that exponent? And the way we do that is by using what we call logarithmic functions, okay? These are inverse of exponential functions. So they basically undo my exponential functions. Now, if you remember inverse functions, the basic premise of that was that they flip over that y equals x axis. So if you had a point that, say, existed at negative 2 and positive 3, right? That reflection would be across the y equals x axis, which means your x becomes y and your y becomes x. So the um, inverse of this point here would be 1, 2, 3 and negative 2, right? You've just flipped the x, oops, sorry, 3 and negative 2. That's a positive 3 and a negative 2. So you've just flipped the x and y around and that is the basic premise of what an uh, inverse function is. So what we're also going to be looking at is the graph of these log functions because they're going to be inverse. So if you think about the graph being like this, right, then the inverse is going to be somewhere down here. And we'll look at that in more detail in a second video. Okay, what we're going to talk about today is basically just, or in this video, what log functions are. Now, here is your basic exponential function, right? This is your exponential function. And then this is your uh, inverse exponential, inverse exponential, and essentially it is equal to your log as well. Okay, so we're going to look at two different forms. Even though this isn't x, this isn't logarithmic form. It's uh, what we do to this. We put this in log form, and then there's an equivalency there going on. Okay, so let's check this out. First of all, here is my inverse exponential. Boom. There's it, there's my inverse in exponential form. How do I write this in log form? It's a way that allows us to solve it, right? Remember that we usually have functions uh, in the form y equal, and we are talking about logarithmic functions, right? And exponential functions is an exponential function. The inverse is equal to x. Well, how do we make it equal to y? Right, so that it's a, a function again. Now, in order for an inverse to exist and for an inverse to actually be a function, remember that it has to be a one to one function. And look at this here is my exponential function that is a one to one function where every x has only one y and every y also only has one x. So it is a one to one function, which means that its inverse, which is the log function, is a function as well. Okay, so they have to be one to one functions or they are one-to-one -one functions. Now here is how we convert this inverse exponential function into log form. And it's simply uh, y is equal to log b, log base b of x, okay? Now what I want you to identify here, look, the exponent, right, is what your log is equal to. The base of the exponent is the base of your log. And x, is just the third number. You just need to remember where two belong. Logs equal your exponents and the B is the base. So what are we gonna do here? We're going to convert a few and uh, see if we can do it. But before we do that, I'd like you to look at your calculators. 
I don't know where your calculator is, but find your calculator. It will have a log button. It may also have an LN button. We'll deal with that one later. But what you should notice about your log button is it does not have a base. Some of them might, okay, but the majority of older calculators or even the TI-83s, whatever, I wish I had it here, I apologize, they uh, don't have a base written. Okay, even if you take your phone and look at the calculator, it's probably just going to have log. Now, what is assumed here is that it's a base 10. Log base 10 of X is basically what log X is, okay? They use base 10. We're going to have a method down the road here very quickly where we can convert logs to any base we want. So we're always going to choose base 10 so that we can use our calculators. Very simple process, but before we get there, we're going to start uh, getting comfortable converting between um, logarithmic and exponential form because that is essentially what uh, how, or what we use to solve uh, a lot of these things that we convert them right so I'm going to show you a couple things here here we have exponential form and I want to convert it into logarithmic form so let's go from exponential to logarithmic all right so we go log log base what well we said the base is the base of the exponent base 3 we've got an equaling to the exponent here so log base 3 equals the exponent. Well, the 9 just goes here. And get used to looking at this. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. Okay? 3 base power of 2 is 9. Okay? So uh, let's try it again. Log base is what? Base is 5. Equals what? Equals the exponent, which is negative 3. And the 125 goes in there. Okay? Let's have a look at the other way now. Let's go backwards in this form. Well, 2 is the base, so 2. It equals the exponent. Power of 5 is 32. Let's try it again. The base is 4. The exponent is what it equals to. 4 to the power of 1 half is 2. And hopefully you remember that 4 to the power of 1 half is the same as saying the square root of 4 to the power of 1 because there's another log thing or another exponent thing here. Let's have a quick look. Okay. If I have x to the power of 2 thirds, how are you going to put that in? Uh, well, let's actually do this differently. How about if I have a base to the power of x over y because it'll be true for anything. That is the y root of of b to the power of x a very important concept to get okay we dealt with it in exponents but that's going to come up uh down here or in your book okay when you're doing some of these questions it will definitely come up so uh knowing that or hopefully feeling a little more comfortable going back and forth here you really should be able to go back and forth it's not just a unidirectional thing okay i'm going to ask you now to evaluate these three logs here Okay, notice they're not in base 10, so I can't just hit my calculator and go log 3, base 9, okay? Uh, a lot of these you're going to be doing in you know, without a calculator. You, once you can convert it, then you should be able to solve it. Now, if we're looking for what this equals to, let's just make it equal x, okay? And then convert it to exponential form. So, um, this is your base, 9 to the power of x is equal to 3. What the hell? How am I going to do that? Well, you can see that the square root of 9 is 3, right? So it would be uh, x is equal to 1 half because the square root of 9 is 3, right? Uh, the other one actually looks the same. I meant to start off um, doing it a little bit differently. This is what I meant to start off with. This is a little easier. If you're looking to make find out what this equals to, well, you make it equal to something. And then... We'll find that something by converting this into exponential form. This would be 4 to the power of x is equal to 16. And in this case, it's a little bit easier. You can see that x is equal to 2, right? Okay, this one, a little trickier, but not that hard. If you remember or if you practice some of those exponential equations and solving exponential equations, when you get this, which is 4 to the power of x is equal to 8, you might be a little flustered at first because you know that 4 squared is 16 and the square root of 4 is 2. What the hell are we going to do, right? Well, remember that we can convert them to the same base, right? So this is going to be uh, 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, to the power of x. So 2 to the power of 2x is equal to, sorry, not 8 cubed, but 2 cubed. 
right? So then you can just see, well, if they have the same base, we equate the exponents. So 2x is equal to 3. It means that x has to be equal to 3 halves. All right, so a reason we dealt with exponential equations was so that we can um, solve these type of log questions, okay? Now, what I was thinking of doing maybe is quickly looking at your book here and seeing, we're looking at page 167, okay? 167, seeing if we can convert these. Now, uh, we've already done this one basically, right? 4 to the power of 2 is 16. Uh, 32 to the power of 3 fifths is 8. Woo! That's kind of funky because we have a fractional exponent. Oh, well, don't let that screw you up. All right, let's zoom in here a little bit. Whoa, look at that. I can do it. All right, so uh, let's look at these now. Write these in X, uh, logarithmic form, right? So uh, log always start. Let's go down here somewhere. Let's do this one. Log base what? Base 8 is equal to the exponent of 4 thirds and the 16 goes in there okay um, evaluate the following without a calculator 2 to the power of what is 8 8 to the power of what is 2 5 to the power of what is 1 right so 5 to the power of x is equal to z uh sorry is equal to 1 right because let's just make this x so 5 to the power of x is equal to 1 you can see that x in this case is zero we're going to look at some log laws soon, too, to see what we can do with logs, just like we have expo exponent rules, right? We're going to, um, for example, if you have 3 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 2, you know that you can add the exponents, right? Oops, it's up here. So um, we have similar laws for logs. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. I think that you should be able to do most of these questions. I'm going to make another video, and I'd suggest you watch it, that deals with uh, the graphs of these log functions, okay? So these, uh, you should got to be comfortable going back and forth. That's the key right now. Have to be comfortable going back and forth and evaluating these basic laws, log, uh, logs, okay?